Hello guys, David Vos here. Well, it's kind of late. It's pretty late. I don't know what time it is. I can't see a clock from here, but... um, And the moon hadn't come up yet. It was just kind of like pitch black outside. I um already made that one video, and I said I would probably try to get this out tonight. I don't know if I'll get it out tonight or tomorrow morning, but... Because it takes a while to upload it. And But I, I thought I'd go ahead and turn this on. See what comes out of my mouth. Um, I never have any kind of script. But I want to talk a little bit about the moon. It's, I guess, since I already talked about the moon, this will be part two. But Because there, there's a lot more to say about the moon. There's some very odd things. There's some sort of cognitive dissonance that humans have. That we all repeat things that are very obviously questionable. Let's say that you were standing on the earth a thousand, ten thousand years ago. You're caveman. No, I better not make it a caveman because then you'd say, well, you're too stupid. You wouldn't be able to figure it out. Okay, let's say it was just 500 years ago in your dark ages. You never went to school. You're not educated. You look up in the sky and you see this thing. You probably know a language. You were born by a mother and a father that taught you how to speak. There were no roads in your country. The nearest town was just a village. People lived like this for thousands of years. There was no school or education, but you had some kind of tribal language. And I'm not saying you're stupid. You learned a lot of things, a lot more things than people today know. You you might know how to hunt, how to build a hut or a house or a cabin. If you're a Viking, you might know how to canoe across the ocean. I don't know. Probably know a lot of things. How to trap, how to catch a mocking bird. I don't know. But you wouldn't have any of what we call technical skills. You wouldn't know what, except what somebody told you. That there's a man in the moon and it's all made out of green cheese or whatever your religion told you. You had no reason to disagree. I mean, you, it was kind of frowned on to be a disagreeable one. Human beings didn't go around disagreeing. They had, they're five years old. Before they, you know, those are memories we all have back five, six, seven years old. And you're just now becoming aware of the existence and reality and you've noticed that dad's got to go work and it's you're so proud of him you you love him or you're you you want to be like him you want to be near him he teaches you how to build stuff mom is always there when you're sick and you love her so much and she comforts you and when you fall down you you know you can go to her and these people tell you that there is a thing called the moon. That's what they call it. They say, see that big round thing? That's the moon. Oh, well, what, you know, what is that? That's the moon. Okay. I mean, you didn't even, what, you're five, six years old. Have you been asking? Mom, what's that thing in the sky? Oh, no, oh, how scary. I've got to know what that is. Well, little Johnny, take a look at the other direction. That's the sun. You can't even stare into that one. Oh my goodness, I didn't even notice that before. What the tarnations is it? What would you do? What would you think? You weren't ever required to explain what that was when you were five. You didn't have any scientific information. You didn't know what a million miles was. And they trying to tell you it's 93 million miles. You wouldn't have any idea. Nobody would even mention it to you because you're too little, you're babies. So they wouldn't bother you with all the details. You'd just look up there and there it is. You never asked any questions. You didn't say, Mom, you know, first time you get to go outside and ride your tricycle. You think you'd be like, Mom, what in the tarnations are those things out there with little green leaves? Like, Mom, I found something. What is it? Oh, it's a rock. I mean, wow, what is this thing? Look at the sand. Oh, it goes right through my fingers. This is amazing. Look at water. Oh, yeah, you started drinking water. You started becoming familiar with water from the moment you're born. But think about it. Puppies come right out the womb. 
and they're like looking for something to drink. As soon as their eyes are open, they can walk around. You put water in front of them, they're going to start lapping it up. They know exactly how to get that out of there. Their tongue just goes, you know, they just, they don't have to like, wait a minute, what am I going to do here? What is the, the, the name of this procedure? Is it best to come in slowly and then dip your nose or, you know, do you just tip the bowl up and chug it down? I mean, it seems like it's all just comes natural and nobody's worried about what anything really is. At what point do you sit your kid down and say, okay, now, Johnny, you're five years old now. We're going to explain what everything is to you. I'm a daddy. This is mommy. How do you know the difference? Can you smell, honey? That's You smell us, okay? Dad stinks. He's been out working all day. Oh, dad's got short hair. He knows who dad is. You don't need any kind of explanation. He might, you know, no, nobody ever really says anything real. You ask somebody something and their mind goes into gear and they're like, okay, why are they asking me this? I better make this a good answer. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to look stupid. Now, what is the textbook answer? Oh, what is the moon? Well, the moon is a, it's a moon. <laughs> yeah, all the planets have them. They're satellites. And well, how far is it from the earth to the moon? Well, it's actually 200,000 miles. Well, how far is that? Well, let's see. If you got on your tricycle and you took off right now, You'd never make it. <laughs> but, you know, they don't ask. They don't ask how far away is it. But as soon as they see it and they feel comfortable with it, but you just believe whatever your mom and dad tells you and then this carries on to your church and you go to school and the teacher tells you that the moon is 2,000 miles in diameter. It orbits the earth. And the earth is orbiting the sun and the sun is orbiting Sirius and beyond that, we really don't know. We, we, we're inside some sort of swirling mass called the galaxy. And the speed of the galaxy, you know, they've got some number, right? They, they know how fast all the stars are going and all the angles. Oh, yeah. So I hear some of you saying, oh, yeah, so we shouldn't believe anything that they say because they're all lying. That's a peculiar thing that all these people would be lying to us. But they are. But here's the thing you have to understand. This phenomena of everything you, you've been told is a lie has only been the last maybe 2,000 years since Christ. And it started at the time of Christ because they didn't want you to believe in Jesus so they had to make up an entirely different, ridiculous universe that was fake and brainwash you for two thousand years and have endless wars and persecutions and inquisitions and martyrdoms because people would die for the truth. It took two thousand years to whittle us down, humiliate us and beat us and frustrate us and deceive us and make us fearful little ignorant, insecure idiots that believes everything we're told even though we're also being told that everything we used to know is now false. Men are now women and the earth isn't round anymore. It's flat. And science is ridiculous. We don't really know such thing as the moon. It's not really there. It's probably just a machine. There, there are little alien greys that are ruling over us and no one's ever seen one. We got a picture of one. And Sitchin says the Bible's fake, but his interpretation, which was a big H-O-A-X, him and Darwin and Freud and Nietzsche and all the rest of them, in just the last, now, 2,000 years, especially got worse and worse, you know, like the last 500 years and the last 200 years was even worse. The last 100 years is worse than that. And the last 50 years has been unbelievable. And the last 20 years has been just plain old, the great apostasy. And now, everything you've ever been told or been persuaded to believe is a lie. 
You're being monitored. You don't even know it. You don't even know what freedom is. And you've thrown away your faith in Christ and willingly raised your hand and asked for socialism. I know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay something on you right off the bat here. Just to start off, let's just prove in just a very easy, simple way. Let's just prove that these people that are telling us all this stuff are lying. Because most of us think they're lying. Some of us don't. Some of us don't. I mean, I've got relatives that really believes the government. You know, they went out and got all their thingies, right? And they're still getting the other thingies. But I'm going to show you some clear evidence that we can determine that they have come up with a bunch of stuff. What would be the reason? I think it's probably because there's something they don't want us to, to know or do, like grow up. Get out from under their control. Because see, we're easily manipulated. And they know psychology. They've got some science. In order to have this, they must have developed it for years. And and they, they've worked night and day tirelessly compiling knowledge and books that only they were allowed in their family and their kin to get their PhDs. And they learned all this stuff. And in doing so, they had certain people members of the family take jobs and spend their entire life dedicated, not to the Lord, but dedicated to understanding one thing. What? How does a piece of moss grow from the ground? What are the parts of a human body? You know, can you name all the 7,452 bones in your foot? We've got to be experts on everything. We've got to invent everything. Why? So that we can learn and we can be smart and we can go to the moon and we can then go onto the stars. No, I don't think that's why. I think that whoever came up with this society couldn't have done it because they want this society. They built all this up because it's so wonderful and they're just so happy that they built it. Nobody's happy with this, but we're all addicted to it like heroin. Yes, I get that. Nobody knows what to do with it now. We're already addicted to it. We can't stop because it'll kill us. You stop producing um, textiles or sucking the oil out of the ground and there's no more produce going to go to the market and millions and millions and billions of people would die. So nobody wants to just end it. You can't, what are you going to do? Oh, we could come up with a policy of depopulate. Um, yeah, don't even say that. But why would you ever get to that point where you're just like, okay, now we've decided too many people. We like the idea, but now, you know, this whole idea of just having more and more people and, you know, job, job, jobs, and that's all that matters is now, what, they want to get rid of everybody and make the world a paradise again? After what, millions, supposedly, years of evolution? And, and, and what, aren't you the same people that believe in Descartes and Spinoza? Or Marx or whoever you are. Einstein, Freud, Darwin. You thought this was good. You believe in this. You believed it so earnestly that you forced it down our children's throat. And you programmed and propagated us and you lured us with the little carrot on the stick and you offered us 60 acres in the mule and we went. Hi ho, hi ho. Why? It's off to work we go. And 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 what did they get out of it? Well, they built this wonderful world that now they want to tear down. Why? And If they did, and that moon is just a rock that flung out there when an asteroid so large hit the Earth, which I guess was called time at the time, was this huge planet, and it busted up. Parts of it become all of the asteroid field that we see between Mars and Jupiter. 
Um, the moon is one piece of the earth. And there are some of the other planets that may be part, that was part of this. It's all busted up, right? And I guess it's like some random chaotic event. Just like, oh my goodness, here come an asteroid. <laughs> you know, that was that. And then the world ended. And this rock, like, it would, how do you get round? Oh, there's gravity, Dave. Okay, I get it. So this rock flung out there and... It just sort of took up residence accidentally flying it around because of, you know, all these Newtonian physics and all these rules that we little peasants don't understand. It went flying out there and ended up in the orbit whereby the size of the rock matched exactly the size of the sun, which is, we now find out 93 million miles away so much bigger than the moon that you would have to be 93 million miles away at that size to be exactly the same size as the moon, which is only 200,000 miles away. And not only that, but we're or we're orbiting the sun and we're spinning, but the moon is orbiting, but not spinning. Now, how do you do that? Like, how would you keep going around and around and around and around? Unless maybe if you could imagine that the earth is, or the moon is so perfectly balanced that if you set it exactly at one angle and then spun it around the earth at 27.3 days per revolution, that it would not wobble one stinking little bit. But the face of the moon that we see will continue to be the face of the moon for another several thousand years. We don't know, but it never moves. Well, as I said the other day, there's only one explanation for that. It couldn't be accidental, all these things. The universe could be a product of spontaneous Big Bang Theory, which, whatever that means, there's really no theory to it. It's just, well, a long, long, long time ago, it all just, boom, blew up. Well, what blew up? What was existing that blew up that made all the stars? What is that, and how did it come into being? Well, we haven't got that far. But your theory that this deity existed and created everything, well, who made him? See, what you don't understand. That's not what actually Christianity taught. That's not what the ancient ones taught. Because you lied to the people and got them to be confused. Then you said, oh, that's stupid. And you made some more lies up and you brainwashed them to believe in Santa Claus. Because we never believed that the universe was created by the bearded man floating around in yonder heaven. Never. The divine being is the great word. And this is a philosophical book. It is a scientific book. And the Pythagorean priesthood and those philosophers and those priests knew astronomy. They had the holy writings, which were a divine science. And that science has never been disproven. You've just hidden it from the people. So yes, the divine made the world. There is a purpose. It's not chaos. The moon is the size that it is. And the sun is the size. And the way everything moves is for days and seasons. It was created by the creator, which is the mind. There's purpose. There's a, there's a design. It's not Darwinism. And now you must obey people who just recently came along with these weird theories and rejected all of the ancient ancestors and all of their knowledge. They think it all began from nothing and now they've gotten to the pinnacle of their knowledge. And all this other stuff is fairy tales and superstitions. They've thrown it all out and you fell for it. <laughs> okay. No. 
you would be surprised if you saw something floating through the air, if it wasn't a leaf. But you don't ask questions, do you? Well, now, why is the leaf? You just know, well, it's lighter, but you don't even have to have a language. But you just know that. You wouldn't ask Daddy, Daddy, how come leaves can float, but rock can't? You probably picked a rock up yourself and felt it was heavy. So you just know all this stuff. You don't have to go to school for it. And you would know that it's peculiar that the moon and the sun is the exact same size to sight. That the bright light ruled the day and the lesser light the night. And that they were used for times and for seasons and for days and for years and measuring and marking and there's a whole story behind every one of them. It's like somebody prophesied from the beginning, the end. And this is all a schoolmaster leading us to Christ. 500 years later, you think that's ridiculous. And now you believe some guy in a white trench coat who tells you that the moon just happens by circumstance or happenstance to be exactly the same size as the sun, at least from our eye appearance. And just happens to be completely balanced, rotates every 27.3 days without moving one little bit. We always see the face of it. Well, I was, I don't know, I can't remember. Oh, somebody sent me a video and I watched it. And it was about a guy, I think it's called Cliff High. Now, I know some of you probably already seen the guy. He's, I guess he's got quite a few people watching him. Supposed to be really in smart, and I had seen it the second time now. But this time it was about the moon. I think that's why somebody sent it to me because I had done a video on the moon. And I listened to quite a bit of it. I didn't listen to all of it. And I like him. I don't know very much about him yet. And I don't know that I'm going to watch a lot more because I don't watch videos. I got nothing against him. Of course, I didn't agree with everything. But I understood where he was coming from. I feel like he made some. Now, I could put. His, I could just tell you to go and watch him, Cliff High. He does a lot of this, I guess, probably. But he comes to the conclusion that, and you know what, this may be the, where I heard, remember I said that this all got started because I saw a video or somebody, uh, sh a short or TikTok or something, where the person was saying, this is proof that the moon is a disc and not a, a ball because of the fact that the light is consistent all the way to the edges. And there's no shadow as it goes down around to make it look like a round ball. And I said, well, yes, but when it's a crescent, there is shadows. And my explanation was because I believe that the moon was a source of light. So I mentioned that because this Cliff Eye guy he concludes, and it's almost like in his mind it's conclusive. And this is kind of how he works. And so I want to point this out, that you can't follow somebody like this that only has this one argument and you're supposed to follow them. Even if you didn't get one over on one of their little arguments along the way, you're supposed to keep following them. So he says, oh yeah, this is proof. What I'm going to say, everything else is going to be true because we're going to go one step at a time. I can prove that the moon is flat. And he proves it by saying that you don't see any shadows on the peripheral of the moon. And if you were shining a light on it, because he could reproduce the experiment in his garage, shine a flashlight, and it's brighter on the point furthest toward the lamp. But as it curves around to the peripheral, it gets darker and darker and then fades. Which none of that did he prove. I mean, we said that the other day. If you tried that in your basement and you use a flashlight, you're losing the spotlight. You're not using the diffused light because the sun is shining all in directions all around. But of course, as I said, I don't believe that the light's traveling. And therefore, I don't think that it would, a reflection might do what that guy was saying. 
But because he assumed that the light, the moon is reflecting light, he thought it was proof that it had to be a disk. I don't know if that would be proof, but if it were proof, it wouldn't matter. Because, as I said, there is another explanation that the moon is giving off light. It's a source. The Bible actually says that the moon is a lamp and that the sun is a light. It says the sun is a light and the moon is the lesser light. And therefore, the positive side of the moon or the toroidal field or whatever would be lit up. And the negative side would be dark and it wouldn't have shadows. And when you see a crescent moon or a quarter moon or whatever, you're seeing the moon's face, everything on the side of the moon that's facing the sun is going to be lit up. But if you're at another angle, you're on the earth and it's now on a different angle, you're only seeing a quarter of it. And then that's where you get to see the curvature because maybe a hundred mile width where the light that is on the positive side is shining into and blurring the darkness. It's overcoming the darkness slightly, even though there cannot be any light source anywhere but on the positive side of the moon. But still, the dark side is still affected a little bit. So his argument breaks down. You can't follow until you prove one way or the other whether the moon is a source of light or reflective light. And as I was listening to this guy, I mean, he does this quite a bit. He makes this argument and you're supposed to follow. And then he goes off in some crazy idea that all of a sudden most people will follow him and just obey and do whatever he tells them, like he's mesmerizing you. He's the authority. Now listen up. And you follow him. And when you get on this trail, wherever he takes you, you have to entertain this idea seriously. So now he's going to figure out from this that there's aliens that rule over us and, you know, maybe they've got some of us working for them. And, you know, he's got this whole plan. And I was thinking, just like he didn't know that the moon was a source of light, a lower wattage, albeit, but a source light. And that's why you can see the brightness all the way around to the peripheral. Doesn't mean that it's a disk. We can see it's not a disk when there's a quarter moon. You can see the curvature. He didn't mention that. So he just passes over little things like that. And, and just as he didn't know that, He's also not right about his very first premise. He doesn't seem to believe in the divine being or Jesus Christ. Now, I didn't watch any of his videos about Jesus and I don't, he never said whether he did or didn't believe in Jesus, but he did talk about the elves as if they were just some sort of alien beings that took over the planet and created this, this present system we've got or whatever. Like I talk about El and the Elohim and that, one of their sons was Jesus is the firstborn and, you know, all in this sense. But I talk about the elves as the powers that are real and that Jesus is truly the son of deity and that he came to tell us that he loves us, that there's a purpose, that the universe is real, that we're going to live in paradise. I have a foundation, not that it was just handed to me by some guy that got his pedigree from a 1499 certificate in the mail but I went directly to the divine being himself I tested it to test him to see that he is good and ask what you will and it shall be given I took it seriously where it said knock and it shall be open and I went and I knocked and keep on praying continually. And I did that. And sometimes you have to fast when you pray, it said. So I tried that. And I found an answer. I communed with the divine being. 
And I know. And I know that there is a divine being. And I have been shown by that divine being through his Holy Spirit that the stories that are in the Bible are the same stories as in mythology and they're not some make-believe caveman that came up with a crazy idea about the elves. Maybe he thinks they're partly real or partly some kind of story like Santa Claus that he doesn't think is all actually that true. But maybe in his mind he just thinks that they're a bunch of aliens and he thinks that the moon being kind of a disc is a... Well, he didn't say it's a disc. He says it's a... Uh, that there's people in there. There's a presence in the moon and it's how they are controlling us. It sounds like a story, a fantastic novel that would maybe be a blockbuster movie. What if we could come up with all kinds of things? One very plausible thing that people have put forward in the last hundred years is that there's such a thing as aliens. But if you just told people they were aliens, you didn't tell them what they look like, give them some reference, something to think in their mind. Because, you know, we used to think they were white robed, flowing white people with blonde hair and had wings. And we all thought that's what angels look like. You know, I know those poor black people, they must have, you know, thought that was a little unfair that all the angels were white. But, um, well, the devil was black, right? I remember Muhammad Ali pointing that out years and years ago. Of course, that's not actually what the Bible means when it talks about angels. The Bible speaks in parabolic language. But, you know, anybody, if you were, like, going back to when you were a little kid, you just knew stuff, you didn't ask questions. You didn't have to know how to say moon. You saw this thing up there. You didn't get spooked by it. You didn't ask, what's that? You know? You just understood this is life. This is the way things are. You didn't have to know. So what did you think when you were little and you saw the moon? What did you think it was? Nobody ever asked you. You never thought about it, right? It's the moon. What are you talking about? I don't know. As you got older, you would hear people talking and maybe you went to school and they told you it's a satellite. And then all these other things called planets have them rotating and then they're rotating around the sun and they, you're given all this information. You told you were told 200,000 miles. You, you accepted it. What are you going to argue with the teacher? You believed it. Well, then you got people like this cliff eye guy that says, well, yeah, I don't believe in anything that we were ever told. Not even that there is a divine being. Jesus is not the truth. This is where I think a lot of people get off. They think, well, if we've been lied to about everything, then we can just make up whatever we want. You know, just let's make up a, a, a I mean, they don't have any foundation, so they just make up something. You, you know, let, let's say, let's say we don't know. Don't know anything, because they lied to us about everything. Well, how many people do you think in just a year or two could sit down in their basement on their computer and come up with the entire truth and understand exactly what the moon is now since we were told something that it ain't true. And you could you could just, met, okay, I'll think about what the moon is. He's got a way, a method, whereby he's one conclusion to another conclusion to another conclusion to a little bit of speculation. He throws that all together, mixes it up and says, bam, I got this theory and this has got to be what it is. And everybody should listen to what I'm saying. As, if you want to listen to a novel, he, he admits he doesn't really know and he's just trying to imagine all this. Wasn't that what you do, Dave? No. I've accepted thousands of years of my ancestors. I've looked at the odds of every one of these nations writing down in their holy books the exact same information about the Holy Virgin that gave birth to the Divine Son. I know that if I'd never built a house before and I'd just come out of some delusion where I'd been in some prison where they had told me erroneous information and had been drugging me and, and, and 
MK mind altering treatments and, and I didn't know who I was. I was crazy out of my mind. And then one day I woke up and decided, you know what? I figured it all out. I don't think you're going to have a much luck that way. And I don't believe in luck. So therefore, if we're going to f- figure out what the truth is, we're going to have to look at what we've been told and see if there's any merit. And I understand modern religions have told us lies and that's all lies. But it's very simple to look at the parables and see how they all match and then start tracing it back. We got to start somewhere. Look at what we already believe and, you know, it's what science says about the moon. Because that would be the only possible way that you and your one little lifetime could ever figure it out. You'd have to read something, have ideas about what others have said before you and and look at their theories and their proofs. The thousands of years of evidence, the geometry and the the astronomy. and Can I sit down here today and say, yeah, I've got a telescope like Newton. And I've learned trigonometry and I've invented calculus. And I don't know. I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't say that out of my own mind, I could give you all the answers and you know, if I had no books, if I didn't have the mythologies and the Bible and the stories and the history and the people who studied the history who became scientists and all of their experiments and their theorems and their discussions and the many thousands of books and experiments. If I had gone through all of that, like many of them do, they spend their life dedicated to learning, 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 learning. And most of them never really can disprove the body of work that all men have done up to that point. I don't know of anybody that has. And if you think you can disprove all the body of science, the whole shebang, you have to undermine the science we have today by pulling out the science that we've had for thousands of years. Do you deny that two and two is four? You cannot. You're an ass. You're an idiot if you deny science. Newton, study him. Just go and do a little study. You don't know anything about calculus or trigonometry or geometry or Newtonian physics, the laws of Newtonian physics. And and you've never done any experiments to see if any of this is true, or or even read a book to see how thousands of people before you have done so. So for you to come along, you know, a guy was just looking at, I don't know, just popped up just now before I started doing this. Joshua, the Sons of God Ministries. I guess he's doing his third in a series on how Paul was an idiot and the Bible's wrong. And I'm listening to him for about five seconds, and I'm thinking, well, I ain't got time. I got to make my own video here. But I just wanted to see what he was saying. And he's all serious and he sits in front of this like fireplace or something. And he's, I don't know, I thought it was going to be like uh, my three sons and, you know, guy with the pipe. And he's like, do you know that the Bible's a bunch of crap and, and, and there's no Jesus and he's not coming back and you are all stupid and I'm going to prove it. Stay tuned. And you're like, what? I mean, I, I mean, I, there's all these people out there just sitting with bated breath waiting for him to come back after the commercial because they want to hear how all that we've ever heard or known in this universe is wrong. And nothing delights them more than to find out that Jesus is just a big hoax and he's not coming back and we're all going to die. So when I think of that alternative, I don't get happy and do a video about it. Hey guys, we're all going to (laughs) die. Ha ha ha, yay. And here's how the proof goes. No, what I do is I go, whoa, that's not acceptable. If there's no mommy and daddy and no paradise to go to and they ain't coming back to save us, then we're done. So I'll tell you right now, before I die, I'm going to get on my knees and try this little thing about praying sincerely. I'm not going to be presumptuous. I'm not going to say I know anything when I don't. I'm not going to make up some story like I'm sorry, Cliff Hyde, but you're making up a story. I think you're a smart guy and you got a lot of knowledge, I guess, from what I can tell, but you don't have a foundation. 
from which to understand the universe. We're not talking about some bearded man floating in yonder heavens. That's not the kind of deity the Bible believes in. You don't have a foundation because you don't know that the universe is a real being. It's a purpose. There's divine destiny involved. And someone's watching over us and they're coming for us. And you don't believe that. So everything you say from this point forward is wrong. Because it's just your opinion. You know, some people don't want to believe the earth is round. They discard all of these thousands of years of science and, and, and personal observation. Go out and look and see the sun comes up in the east and goes down in the west. I mean, you know, every, all the stars revolve around Polaris in the north. And if you're in the southern hemisphere, it all revolves around the southern pole star. Boom! Proof! But they ignore it all. I think it's, it's, it's described in the Bible what we're going through. It says in the latter days that when this all begins to start falling apart, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and it's got to be a lot worse than just World War I. So whatever this means, kingdom against kingdom and famines and earthquakes in one place after the other, whatever that means, I mean, it's got to be a lot worse than what we've had. Because Jesus said that it will be so bad that not anybody will be surviving it. But on the account of the elect, because he cuts it short, a few people will be saved. But it'll be like the days of Noah. Flood came and swept them all away. And just at that point, it says, you will see. This is what Jesus said. You will see. The sun will, will be darkened. will not give us light. And the moon will be turned into blood. And the stars of heaven shall fall. And they'll be shaken. As you shake a fig tree. And all the figs fall down. That's how it'll be. The heavens will be rolled up like a scroll. And then they will see the sign of the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And all the angels saying, give deity glory and worship him. The one who made all things, the creator. Who made all the stars and the great deep in the vast starry sky. Fear deity and give him glory for the hour of his judgment has come. And woe unto the earth for the devil has come down to you having great wrath. You see, they think that's just fairy tales. That's not going to happen, Dave. I'm a preterist. I don't know what that means. I'm not as smart as you. But what I know because I become like a child Innocent because the Lord loves me and I know it and I accept it. It's free. It's grace. No guilt. Because I know the Lord loves me. And I've come humbly. I heard the message. I thought, well, look, I'm down here dying already. I mean, I might as well just listen. Take a little listen to Jesus. See what you guys say. You don't have to believe it, but you should listen. Now, you can believe Cliff High or somebody else. There was another guy I was listening to last week that this whole story about how the universe existed and all, always has to do with aliens and stuff. And the moon's hollow, right? David Icke, or I don't know, or, or they're, they're, they're using it to just, you know, mess with us, right? The moon, they're up there in the control tower. Okay, it's like uh, 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 the Truman Show. Yeah, that's what it is. I, I agree, it is kind of like that. But I'm just saying that they've taken it to such an extreme that they don't all, no longer believe in the Bible. They don't believe in history. They don't believe in science. They don't believe in math. They don't believe in nothing. Only aliens, which is, if they would only understand that the aliens was created by the elite as a great hoax to mesmerize your mind, Cliff High, to make you believe all this ignorama stuff that it just came, Johnny come lately, ridiculous crap that people are start spouting and telling everybody now. 
But conveniently, we no longer believe in anything else that we ever did believe that they always believe, right? The science, we've always believed. There's n- People actually believe that they used to think the earth was flat. No one ever believed that, ever in the history of man. Until some goofball, named David Weiss or whoever, comes along, some one another one of these Sitchins or, or Van Dynikens, you know, these Cohens from this little elite family. Yeah, from, well, uh, Bavarians, right? They write these books and they get these theories going. And then the newspapers publish some weird thing that everybody starts calling little alien greys and now we believe that there's such a thing. Oh, the government found a ship that crashed in Roswell. It's a hoax. False little wavy things on a pole. And that don't mean it didn't happen. It means it was faked. They did it on purpose to deceive you. The devil has come down to deceive your minds, friends. If you don't think that the moon is real, I mean, I guess Cliff High was saying that in 1911, something happened to the moon because before that, people said that it used to be green. Well, if you look on some of these pictures I'm showing you, there are some pictures where it shows it green. Just pictures. But when you look with your own eyes, what do you see? It's gray. Oh, yeah, but before 1911, it was green up there. Really? I never read that anywhere, Cliff High. I'm sorry. You didn't show a quote either. And if you did show a quote, maybe it was some little grammar school idiot with a crayon. Good thing the earth is green. And it was a picture uh, colored by a, a, a fifth grader. Right? Back in 1911. Is that your proof? I don't know, because none of the scientists ever said it was green. No, I didn't live in 1911, but I'm pretty sure that my dad would have told me that his grandpa thought it was green. Well, I remember they did say some people thought it was Swiss cheese. Maybe the, the cheese is turning green. But you don't know what the moon is because you don't believe in the Bible. The moon is, I don't know, hundreds of occurrences. And... It says that the Lord made it for times and seasons. It's not a ship that somebody snuck in there and they're monitoring us. I will tell you this. It is a symbolic of the law. In other words, we get light from the sun and the light represents truth. So when it says the sun will be darkened, it doesn't mean literally, although there could be some eclipse or something to symbolize it so that it can happen literally because the Lord always speaks first literally and then the real meaning, the esoteric truth. And the esoteric truth is the sun will be darkened. That means truth will be gone. Friends, you're witnessing it. There's no more truth in the earth. It's all been turned upside down, the whole earth. And the moon, which represents the law, which was a a lamp to our feet to teach us as a schoolmaster that led to Christ, And we're not under the moon. It'd be fine if the moon went out and we never saw it again. It'd be more balanced in the universe. But the only problem is when darkness comes and the sun's gone, you need some kind of light, even if it's not the truth. You don't have the truth. You can't see distinctly. You'll still stumble and fall when you only got a moon. You can't see your, the ground. Your, it's bare, you know, it's not too bright out. But it's something. It's a little bit of a guide, a lamp to your pathway. The law is a lamp to your pathway. And so, when the darkness was here, all we had was the moon and it was the law. And the law, there's going to come a time, Jesus says, before he returns, where law and order will be turned, not, not put out, but will be turned to blood. That's different. The sun's going to go out. Why? Because in order for the moon to be turned into blood, the sun has to be out. There has to be no more truth in the world. Everybody's got to be in complete darkness and, 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 and be blinded and have no truth. Not no one little bitty truth. It'll all be ignorant. It'll be the apostasy. That's what the sun going out means. The sun is, is the truth of the church. The truth of this world. It goes out. There are no more representatives. Except for what? Elijah, who's a little lamp that witnesses to Christ. The church will still be, there's a little lamp witnessing to Christ, pointing the way. But 
That's why it says that the earth was arrayed with the sun and the moon was beneath her feet. The law is in its place. We've conquered sin and the moon is beneath her feet, but she's arrayed with truth and she has a crown of 12 stars. It means all those 12 natures have been exalted and the lamb lies down with the wolf and the lion will eat straw like the bull. What does it mean then that the moon is turned to blood? Well, the moon was supposed to guide your feet, but if it's turned to blood, well, yeah, you'll still see it. It's a bright red. Maybe it'll be some literal thing like they we see from time to time that the moon does turn red at times. But what does it mean turned to blood? Blood represents death. The government, the law is going to turn on us and kill us. That's what the Bible says. There will be, the law will be killing you rather than giving you light. Rather than guiding you to Christ. And the stars will fall from heaven. What does that mean? Well, the stars are, the, are all the kings and all the authorities. There will not be any more authority. There'll be chaos. And so, if you know and you believe in the ancient priesthood, if you believe in a purpose for this world, if you believe that we're going to live forever, not because you just made sense and you believed it or your daddy told you, but because you got on your knees and you prayed and you found the Lord and the Lord said, I love you. And the Lord gave his Holy Spirit to you and you knew, you had gnosis. And you read the Bible and the Holy Spirit brought the things to mind that you needed to know. The Holy Spirit's your teacher. You need no man to teach you. And it will teach you all things you need to know in the hour in which you need to know it. And you heard and you listened and you obeyed your mother wisdom and you followed after wisdom and common sense and you didn't get proud and try to throw out all the prophets and spit on their graves. Learn to do the best jerky jerk dance you can and get lost to Instagram clicks and get all proud like you know it all and you come to the conclusion that you should have a pronoun of it, she, her, them, they, and y'all. Well, I hope you're having fun in your little dream world. And your little fantasy, you get on your little YouTube every day and tell people some wild theory. Because you heard that they lied to us. Well, yeah, they lied to us. But in order for them to have lied to us, then that means that we probably believe them. And everything you're saying is what they want you to say. And how do I know that? Because you admit you don't believe in the Lord Jesus and therefore I know you didn't pray. You didn't pray long enough because you don't have a testimony. You're still in some kind of weird, strange world where you don't know. You haven't seen the flower and the beautiful petals that are so bright and they smell like perfume and the little bees and the butterflies and you haven't looked into the depths of the heavens and wondered about the mystery of infinity and and put this all together and realize that we're just a little toe in this body and and we all belong here and there's no doubt in our mind that there's more to this world than just modern government and materialism turning your family members into the Gestapo and go to the dossier once a week and get your little thingy. And then all will be fine. Trust, trust, trust. And what do they want you to believe? They want you to get rid of all your, you know, like this belief that the earth is round. We're throwing that out. It's flat now. The idea that men are men and women are women. No, that's not the truth anymore. Everything that is some kind of opposite to what you have all believed for thousands of years. And you're, you're believing it. You're probably believing the lie. See, 
the apostasy has come means there's no more truth. There used to be truth. The sun was shining and now it's not. And when the sun wasn't shining, well, at least we had the moon. We had government that actually was there to, as the Apostle Paul says, to be the avenger of criminals and make justice. Didn't always, wasn't always completely fair. Men made mistakes and all of that, but it, it, you know, it was all we had. Wasn't, it wasn't the sun, it wasn't the light, but the thing of it is, you've, you've accepted the great lie when you reject that the moon is not really the moon. The only way you could do that is by not believing in the Bible, David Icke. I don't know where you get your theories, but there's no reptilians in the Bible. I love you, David, but I got to tell you, you should renounce the theory that there are reptilians and stop telling people there are alien greys and, 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 and there's people from other planets that are ruling over us and stuff like this. That's not true. That's not what the Bible teaches. That's not what the ancient pyramids teach. Even if Sitchin told us that they did. You have to understand he's lying. He's part of this big hoax. Don't believe them. Their disclosure is not genuine. It is simply a great lie. It is the apostasy. Don't fall for it. Jesus is real. He's about to come back. And every eye will see him. Trust in him with all your heart and get down on your knees and start praying. I'm going to go ahead and go. And no, that wasn't the video that I was going to do about the moon. But I got off on a another direction today. I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. May the Lord bless you and we'll see you tomorrow.